What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and it's finally here, the big one that everyone's been asking for, the updated Fantasy Draft Guide for Madden 22 Fantasy Drafts. Uh, this will be the most likely last rendition. I could do another one where I just try to go for the best possible team in my personal opinion. Maybe if you guys are interested in that, let me know. This is the perfect Fantasy Draft, so a team that I think is very young, very good, but not just brokenly finished. It wouldn't really be fun, in my opinion, to have Mahomes as your quarterback, you know, Tyreek as your wide receiver. You know, guys that are already developed and are just broken for the game, very hard to stop. It just isn't that fun to me. But if you guys are interested in that, you want the most broken team possible, in my personal opinion, let me know in the comment section below or maybe by leaving a like and subscribing. That obviously does help as well. It lets me know, hey, they, they like this and maybe they want to see the other one we were just talking about. But... We waited a little long just to make sure that none of the roster updates were going to come out and ruin anything. You know, if it was like the division around, they could have updated, you know, maybe 50 players up one or two and changed the whole lineup. But this should be pretty accurate down to the T. You know, it's like, I mean, quite a bit after the Super Bowl, right? So, I mean, if they're going to do another roster update, it shouldn't be too significant. But in case you've never even heard of a fantasy draft, you don't even know how to do one. This is how it is done. You go to create a new league, of course, use active roster, assuming you have the most recent official roster. If not, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I can't really help you there. Obviously, we have to import it. You choose your team. This uh, case, we're using the Jets. Starting point, that's the most important thing, fantasy draft. So once it says that, you're good to go. But in case you're going to be backing in and out to try and match the position I got for the draft, which is pretty important if you're trying to follow along, uh, the best thing you can do is just turn off pre-existing injuries. Uh, it's the quickest way because if you're gonna be backing out a lot, sure you're gonna you, you know you're gonna have to change the settings a lot. But if you want every single setting that I would turn off right out the gate, you know you you nail it first time or you're gonna nail it first time. This is I mean basically all you need to do, and boom you're done. You've got it all set up. You start, and it'd be crazy if we actually got a, a position we wanted. Uh, a ranking we wanted anyways, uh, start your fantasy draft, and you're good to go, which we ended up getting pick 30, which is maybe for a different rebuild, not the worst thing in the world, but yeah, uh, not really what I'm looking for, so I'm going to retire here, and I go into the one that I did already get, which only took like four tries, believe it or not, it's actually really lucky, and that is pick 10 overall, you're thinking, ooh, pick 10, he usually doesn't go this high, and I'm still not going to be taking a quarterback, once again, I just think it is broken, it is too easy, if you're going to have a guy like Mahomes, number one, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Murray, they're very hard to stop. If you're going to have Dak, he might not be broken OP, like with escape artists or gun. I don't know if he has, I doubt he would have gunslinger, but he's still really, you know, developed. So there's not really much fun there. Russell Wilson, escape artist already developed. Justin Herbert, you know, he's already mid tier, above mid tier. Same with Trevor Lawrence. Rodgers could maybe be fun, but he lasts pretty long with Gunslinger anyways. I was going to say, you know, maybe for an older quarterback to, you know, develop someone afterwards. I don't know, but for whatever maybe reason you have, we do have probably, hopefully, in the pinned comment section, the description of the video at least, an image to the, I want to call it spreadsheet, because once again, it's a disaster, but it gets the job done, a, like, kind of notepad of all the kind of uh, notable names that I would be looking to target and when they're going to go. Now, of course, this is a fantasy draft. It's completely random. The only way it would be physically possible to have the exact same uh, outcome every time is if the draft was static. It was always the same exact rankings. You know, Jets are always pick 10. Buccaneers are always pick 14. Uh, is that 13? 13. Uh, but that's not the case. So, you know, there's some that are guaranteed. Mahomes number one every single time. I'm pretty sure, but a lot of it is going to be, you know, different. Sometimes it's going to be 10 spots off. Sometimes it's going to be five. Sometimes it's going to be like one or two. Sometimes it's going to be right on the nose. So take that with a grain of salt. You know, it's, it's tough, but you know, it's, I'm trying to do as best I can with, you know, what the game gave us. But of course, Rudy showed you the transactions, uh, in case you're following along on the guide or you don't have it. Mahomes would go number one. Lamar, usually number two. I have seen Josh Allen at number three. Personally, though, I would actually take him number two over Lamar. That speed with, you know, the escape artist with the throw power and the gunslinger style or slinger style throwing uh, thing. Uh, but Kyler Murray at four, Dak at five, Herbert at seven. 
Uh, Lawrence at 8. Uh, you know, once again, they do kind of fluctuate at times. Lance at 10, Jair at 11. Miles Garrett's it's like 9 to 12, but 12 usually or 11 usually. Jalen Ramsey at 13, Nick Bosa at 14, Justin Jefferson at 15, Warner at 16, Trey White at 17, Terry McLaurin at 18, jo uh, Jonathan Taylor at 19, Parsons at 20, uh, Hunter at 21, Metcalf at 22, TJ Watt at 23, Pitts at 24, Derwin at 25, Joey Bosa at 26, Nick Chubb at 27, Chris McCaffrey at 28, Tyreek Hill at 29, Aaron Donald at 31, and then Buckner at 32. But as far as what we're going to be doing, I think, honestly, he probably should be the fifth best player on the board, right behind those, you know, four quarterbacks with escape artists that are young. And that's Miles Garrett. I mean, he's just absolutely insane, super young. I mean, the strength, the finesse, the power, the block shed, the speed, what can't he do, honestly? And it's not as OP as an escape artist or gunslinger quarterback, but it's about as close as he can get. This is a really tough pick, Mirror, because honestly, I really think that if you put Miles Garrett with Vita Vea or Jonathan Allen, it's just brokenly good. And I don't know how much fun that is if your, you know, opposing team literally can't throw. They can't throw or run on you, no matter which one you take of these two. I honestly don't know. If you're, like I said, going for the most LP team, that's probably your stop. Ryan Ramchek would be a great piece as well. The superstar lineman, once again, you just literally can't develop them, so. Yeah, that'd be great. Of course, Mackay Becton is still there. I don't know what his abilities are, but uh, he's got... I mean, he's really young, really good. I don't know. I mean, if we're going to go for fair, but still really talented, I'd probably be going with Jonathan Allen or Vita Vea, like I said. I'm trying to debate on which one is technically better here. Vita Vea is a very good player, but I think Jonathan Allen is just... He's got run stopper and inside stuff. You have your edge rusher for the pass rush. I know Jonathan Allen's block shit's a little low, but his abilities make him very good. Ooh, 85 injury, 82 toughness, though. That is really bad. I think just for that reason, I'm going to go Vita Vea with El Toro. We're going to go Vita Vea. Of course, uh, you know, we already have an edge rusher in Miles Garrett. We now go DT. The defensive line, you could pretty much just not touch for the like remainder of the draft, wait till really late. Now, this is the pick I'm a little worried about. This man moves around a lot. Tell me he's there. Justin Fields, please, he's there. Now, once again, kind of depends on what you consider too developed, too good. My goal would probably be third round Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's probably a little bit tougher to develop. He's a little slower, but he is stronger with the throw power, better with the gunslinger style. But Justin Fields, who is still, you know, far from fully developed, he's still, you know, got a lot of growing to do for throwing accuracy and all that. Of course, he doesn't have superstar or X Factor. You get bad abilities. You never know, which makes him still fun with the speed for read options, but in general, not super OP if he gets really bad abilities. If you ever get him a superstar, you never know. You might you might just suck. I don't know. But Justin Fields, third round pick. That's our guy. Of course, once again, if you want to not follow this perfectly and you're, you're not going to look at the updated fantasy draft guide thing that I have. I can tell you some of the names. Like I said, Vita Vea would have been gone pick 18 in the second round on average, but Jonathan Allen at 24, so vice versa. Take whatever one's there. Mackay Becton, 25. That's a great pick if none of those two are there. I would debate, once again, if you're trying to play more for fun and developing, it's those two D-linemen are really tough to beat, but... Still not perfect, right? You know, you still have the other edge. You still have the other DT. You still have linebackers that could get beat. Um, but one of those three options for sure in the second round. Brian Burns maybe at 27. Lattimore at 28. Mark Andrews at 30. Ramchek at 31. Another good pick if somehow Mackay Becton's gone. Patrick Sertan at pick two in the third round. Jamar Chase at three in the third round. But I really think you should wait for wide receivers. There's just so many later that, honestly, you can't even develop them all. Uh, Godwin at pick four in the third round. Jeffrey Simmons at pick five in the third round in case you missed the two DTs. I don't know why you would want to, but sure. Sewell at nine in the third round. Trayvon Diggs at 10 in the third round. He has superstar. Fields on average around 12 in the third, but I have seen five. I have seen 17. So, you know, if he's not there, Zach Wilson should be at 14. Jordan Love at 17, worst case. But honestly, if, if Zach Wilson and Fields are gone, I'm probably just waiting until... Davis Mills in like the round 20 or something or Kellen Mond later on as well uh Jesse Bates at 13 once again safeties are important but they're easy to you know develop when they're fast there's a lot of fast ones later Booter Baker at 24 
Jamal Adams at 27. Minka at 28. You'd probably convert him to corner. Darius Leonard at 30. 32 for Jalen Waddle. Um, yelling at you, sorry. Najee Harris at 11 in the round four. Jalen Hurts at 15 in the fourth round, but of course he's fast, so that's why I put him on the list. Rashawn Gary at 24 in the fourth round. Deron Payne at 26 in the fourth round. Quinn Williams at 28 in the fourth round. Max Crosby at 29 in the fourth. Roquan at 30. Uh, AJ Terrell at 32. Josh Allen at pick one in the fifth round. And then my personal favorite, who is hopefully still there, should be Denzel Ward at pick four in the fifth round is just a guy I always draft because he's just, because he's only star, his value is immense. He's got 72 hit power, 72 catching, 92 jump. He's got 95 speed, 95 XL, 91 man, 88 zone. Just because of the speed ratings and the catch ratings, he might be a top three corner in the game. It's hard to sell because, you know, you do have those guys with those abilities like Jair and Ramsey would be top two. You do have Trey White and all that, you know, top 10 at minimum. Like, very harsh minimum. Uh, but Denzel Ward, for sure, that's the guy. Still need to develop him a little bit because he doesn't have Superstar or X-Factor. And it's not guaranteed, once again, specifically for corners to develop. So, there's that. Of course, uh, round five, pick five, Elton Jenkins, if you want linemen. Uh, jo well, not Josh Sweat. Montez Sweat at pick six in the fifth round. AJ Brown at seven. Hawkinson at 13, which I don't know why you would want to. Ed Oliver at 17. Fair enough, but we already have all our D-line that we need for now. Dante Jackson at 23, 25 for Jamel Dean, 26 for Jalen Johnson. Uh, John Franklin Myers at 27. His swim move is brokenly good, at least on last gen. We're on next gen right now. I don't know how next gen is for pass rush too much. Nah, it's still pretty broken for Finesse. Newsom at 29. Devin White at 32. Rashawn Slater at 1 in the 6th. So right now we're kind of... Looking to potentially reach. There's some reach type of situations here. It's a lot of corners. I would really like to go O-lineman. Who did we have there? Elton Jenkins. If he's still there, that would be a reach and a half, though. Well, not a reach and a half, but that's, uh, you know, you get really hoping, really hoping hard there. But speaking of reach, might go a whole round early. Frank Ragnow. Uh, was it Ragnow? I, I'm going to figure it out one time, I promise. Maybe, probably not. The problem with this pick going to Ragnow is I have him going around 21 and a 6. Now, that's obviously far from guaranteed. But with it being that close, do you maybe just take the shot that he will be there? The problem is my pick would be Devin White, which is obviously a great pick from that. I mean, that's just brokenly fast. But there's so many other fast linebackers later that I just don't... I, I mean, it's early, but I'm really thinking we maybe reach for uh, Mr. Ragnow. You know what? Even though it's a freaking whole round early, I'm going to tank Frank. He's just too good. 25 years old. He's he's just too freaking good. What's his speed? I mean, he could play any position on the line. I mean, it's just you can't go wrong when a pick is that good anyways. You know, 280, yeah, right. Good luck. It's probably because he's a center, to be honest. But 23, I wish I would know or I could know if he would have been there. Gasicki is 22 for me, and, of course, he's gone. I don't know if that really helps anyone, but... You know, there's there's that. Uh, this pick works really good for Noah Fantu, who's pick 32 in the seventh, and that's probably going to be my selection when it gets to that. So this could very well be yet another offensive lineman. Marquise Brown is still there. He's he's obviously an option, but man, the the problem is my list. He actually goes pick 16, so this could just be complete luck, and I kind of want to avoid just complete stupid ones where it's just like very unlikely for that to happen so i don't think i'm going to and oh wait did he have a good year he's pretty good actually i didn't think he had a good year in real life nice and screw it we're gonna go with another lineman a lot of the times we end up kind of neglecting the line and we're like oh yeah we got stars but you know if you do the rebuilds you watch the rebuilds if you don't boost the sliders like 160 170 which i would say it's kind of stupid if you go any higher than like 150 at max you're not going to see those linemen develop very fast so you know that's that's kind of the way i look at it uh dawson knox is actually still there who i suppose it makes sense because he usually goes 16 uh of course some of the options there which is why we reached uh would have been ragnow at 21 like we said but we took him early kasiki at 22 rashawn evans at 26 fun guy but he's a little on the slower side super strong tremaine edmonds at 31 jedrick wills at one in the seventh round Jeff, Justin Simmons at 7 away at 9. He could still be here. 
Uh, Jerry Judy at 11. I don't take the wide receiver. Marquise Brown, if he was there, maybe because he's super fast, but don't take don't take Judy. Uh, his traits even kind of suck. Ja- Dawson Knox, 16. Uh, John Murphy Bunting, 17. Deion Jones at 18. Uh, Quiddy Pay at 22. Daniel Jones at 26. Fun, super fast, but normal. But maybe that's your thing. Not the worst choice. Uh, Barmore at 27. And then Noah Fant at 32. Uh, you kind of have a tough one because uh, Dawson Knox actually kind of just came out of nowhere a bit and uh, developed well. But in my opinion, unless you really, really like to run the ball, which I don't even know how much that run block matters, but it's obviously Noah Fant. He's by far the best choice. But. You know, take it with a grain of salt. Once again, not all these are going to be perfect. Not all these are the guys you want. You're like, I prefer Dawson Knox. I'm a big Bills fan. Or you're like, I love uh, a DT like Barmore. You know, you didn't grab the quarterback. Justin Fields wasn't there. You take Daniel Jones there. It would not be a bad choice. Um, another pick would have been pick one in the eighth round, Saquon Barkley. But for me, I like to develop running backs from the ground up. So it's just not a position I'm interested in grabbing high. Orlando Brown at five in the eighth. Uh, Bradley Chubb would be a fun pick. Eight, pick eight in the eighth round. Winfield uh, at pick 12. Marcus Williams at 13. James Daniels at 19. Isaiah Wynn at 20. Surprisingly, I had Okariki on here at 22, which is kind of a little bit of an early one for me. Jalen Phillips at 23. Uh, Joke at 26. Kinlaw at uh, 32. Uh, Creed Humphrey at 9. Pick 9, or pick 2, round 9. And then it depends on how much you want to go for OP-ness. Oh, penis. Love it. <laughs> Can't believe I said that out loud. Uh, was that in my thoughts? But Devin Bush is one of those really good, obviously, fast, good players. You know, great hit power. You know, some of the things he said in the uh, in, on Twitter we're not a huge fan of, but it's his, you know, it's his life. It's his, you know. Some people have uh, complete hates, and I understand, I guess. Um, it's really tough, though, because... In you know what? No, I don't think I'm gonna do this because I really want Jeremy Chin, and Jeremy Chin goes right around Isaiah Simmons. So instead, we're gonna reach a little bit. I don't know where Isaiah Simmons is. Oh, he's like right there, anyways. For some reason, Isaiah Simmons goes after Devin Bush, which is just hilarious. I was gonna go for Bush and Isaiah Simmons once again. A little bit of a reach. Pick nine. Uh, you know, pick 25 in round nine is what I would have Isaiah Simmons at. We're reaching again, but that's because we want Jeremy Chin, who's pick 30 in round nine. That is a guy you just do not want to lose, in my opinion. So we're going to be taking Isaiah Simmons here because we want him in a linebacker this round, him or Bush. And uh, obviously, Isaiah Simmons is the best user in the entire game by a mile, which is why I have him actually in full capital letters, him and Jeremy Chin in full caps on the little guide thing I made. Um, and then Jeremy Chin, who is just another freak of nature, 6'3", super young, super fast, just absolute god. Once again, pick 30 in round 9, but you're just not going to get him if you wait around. So, you know, we're going to have to take the L and draft these guys pretty early. If for some reason that's not the way you wanted to go, once again, uh, Jeremiah uh, Owusu Koromoa, at 26, Jalen Phillips was at 23 in the 8th round. Kinlaw, 32 in the 8th round. Uh, Creed Humphrey at 2 in the ninth round. Devin Bush at 4 in the ninth round. Uh, Anwenu at 10. And John, Jonah Williams at nine, uh, 12. Oju Lari at 13. Holland at 15. Justin Reed at 17. A very good hybrid pick. Garner Johnson at 18. Patrick Queen at 21. Isaiah Simmons at 25. Of course, this is the ninth round now. Uh, Jeremy Chin at 30. 10th round, which is the one we're in now, uh, would have been in Joku in case somehow you missed on the players you did pick three in the 10th round. Uh, Andrew Thomas at four. Eric McCoy, a very good pick that I would love to have had, but we have two linemen already at five. Dobbins at 21. That's a guy that's not really fully developed. Super good uh, hybrid type, but yeah, once again, maybe a little too developed for me, but still does have you know some needs in case that's the way you want to go. Evan Ingram at 24. Swift at 25. Landon Dickerson at 30. You want to finish that edge? You can go Gross Matos at 31, Pollard at 32 for running back 11, uh, round 11 pick two Jabril Peppers, uh, Rosu at three in round 11 pick seven would be Derisaw, Savage at eight, Kenneth Murray at nine, uh, Elijah Mitchell at 11, C.J. Henderson at 20, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So with this pick, it's going to be tough because once again, I feel like we are just kind of chasing the draft rather than taking best available value. But at the same time, 
when the players are good, it is best available. He is still star, right? He is still star. Okay, fair enough. Uh, maybe a little bit more raw than I would have thought or would have liked, but still a pretty good player. You could still go with him if you want. Obviously, uh, we have Miles Garrett. We have Vita Vea, which is why I'm kind of neglecting the rest, just so you have a little bit more fun actually developing. You know, if you wanted a user, you could use her one of them, and maybe uh, Miles or the other guy gets double teamed, and it's a little easier to develop kind of a younger name. Like, there's a lot of really good corners. It's just the problem. There's so many good ones still. Like, I know I just basically said that twice, technically. But, I mean, you just have a lot of good corners left. Uh, I'm trying to find, like, a really a, a good example of one that's really late that you could start. Uh, like, he's not really great, but Jeff Gladney, pick 29 in the 26th round. Uh, Gary Ann Connolly, 18 in the 27th round. But I'd say the money round for grabbing... Uh, another corner probably will be like round 12 so we are kind of coming up on at least drafting one more and then you know letting the rest just be backups that are fast probably man jk Tobbins is still there dude i might just take him once again he goes around 21 but he can go all the way down to 30 there's a couple of good running backs later but i kind of want someone a little bit better than what we would normally grab. Once again, you still do have to develop him a bit. He does have some good starting ratings, but he's not superstar yet. You still have to get that trucking up to 90 plus, stiff arm to 90 plus, spin move 90 plus, juke move 90 plus. He's very solid. I'm going to go J.K. Dobbins. This has actually been a very good team. And once again, maybe for our brand of fantasy draft guides, maybe even a little bit too good once again, but. You know, instead of those picks, like I said, Landon Dickerson at 30, Gross Matos at 31, Pollard at 32, Jabril Peppers at 11, you know, round 11, pick 2, Rosu at 3, around 11, uh, Derisaw at 7. I didn't like his ratings, though. He was a little bit too low for me. Savage, you can see, just kind of went there. Uh, pick 8 I had him at. Kenneth Murray at 9, but once again, that's a position I do like to develop myself. So even having uh, Isaiah Simmons there is already really OP, in my opinion. Elijah Mitchell at 11, CJ Henderson at 20. Uh, Xavier McKinney at 23, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker at 2, which very well could be this pick. Once again, it's a little early, uh, but you're going to have to reach for one of these cornerbacks, unfortunately, which definitely doesn't make me happy. So with uh, some of the linemen being there, you know, kind of early in the 13th round, I think we probably will look at one of these corners. It's probably going to be between 2 there are a few options, but the two I think that make the most sense are J.C. Horn and Caleb Farley. But you could go Greedy Williams. You could go Asante Samuel. So we're going to go by age. But if you can avoid injury, you could deal with injury, which, I mean, that's not great. But if you can just get to the bye week, get that plus four injury, you put on the plus four to injury that you get through the staff stuff, that's already 87 injury. 87 injury, 84 toughness. You're not going to get injured that much on that. And that's just right out the gate. Once again, every single season, you're going to get that. Wait, is it plus two? I think it might be plus two. Whatever. Plus six, you can get the plus two every single freaking season. Caleb Farley is a hard guy to pass on, and I don't think we're going to. We're going to grab him. He's just so good. Yeah, Muti is a little bit too injury prone. I'm just going to end up going with Quinn Miners. Get another really good lineman who's young. Once again, I'm not really a huge fan of it because drafting star linemen isn't the hardest thing to do. It is hard to get them up and overall, so the first two we grabbed are fine, but that one, once again, that's kind of just like a nothing really else there type of situation, but it is what it is. And Chark could be there, but you already know the trend. We've been drafting early this entire time. We might as well just continue the trend. Grab DJ Chark. If you want the most OP experience, Hardman probably is the better guy, but this guy is more developable. Uh, in the sense that, like, he's tall and he's fast, so you can kind of, like, you know, get him open with the speed, but develop him as that jump ball guy. DJ Chark's our guy here, and I don't think we're going to be taking another wide receiver, because once again, you look at round 31, pick 17, Anthony Schwartz is there, which is why I'm like, do I really want to grab Hardman or Marquise Brown or anything when you have those guys that are just as good at getting open because they're fast, but they at least have a long way to go, so you're feeling more rewarded for actually developing them. But some of the names, in case you didn't want them, Ayuk at uh, 30 in round 12, Merrick at 24 in round 12 would have been a good pick, I think. Uh, Irv Smith at 6 in 13 because you missed the tight end, Cole Komet at 8. Delpit at 9, a little bit on the slower side for me. Maybe you make the argument to play them at not a linebacker. Okuda at 10, Travis Etienne at 13. If you didn't go Dobbins, that definitely would be my pick. Uh, Muti, the injury was too low for me. I decided not to go for him. Pick 15 there. 
Uh, Mooney at 19. Chase Claypool, like I said, I had him around 13. Once again, it might have been Pittman, but it, I mean, you look at some of the names that were there, Mooney and Chark and all that, I think it made sense that Chase would have been there. So, yeah, he's a freak with the size and speed, but Chark's just as good. So, I'm a little surprised. Maybe he glitched out. Maybe he just went early, really early. I don't know, but... No, Igbenogany at 26 in round 13. Dalton Schultz at 27. I don't know how old he is. But I think he is kind of on the younger side, and he developed nicely in real life. Uh, round 14, pick four, Elijah Moore. Not bad. A little bit slower than I would have liked, though. Terrell Burgess at 14. Bateman at 16. Harmon at 18. Chark at 19. Once again, we grabbed him early. Bradbury at 22. You can actually see he legitimately went right on the nose for that, which is thankfully someone. Uh, Joe Tryon at 25. Tommy Tremble is probably your choice at tight end if you sold, uh, which usually I do, but Noah Fant this time just decided to exist for me. But the reason why you go Tommy Tremble, if he's somewhere around here, there he is, 70 overall, he's hidden. Of course, he's on the slower side, so you can make that argument that star isn't that crazy to get. Uh, you could definitely go with uh, someone like even Brevin Jordan's, like basically him, but he's normal instead. But uh, Albert O, someone you can go way later. Uh, when, how late? I mean, I think like kind of roughly 20, 20, round 23 for the speed of that guy. That's, I mean, that's just ridiculous. You know what? We are going to go with Tevin Jenkins. For me, Hardman was still there, but once again, I feel like it'd be cheating because he goes around 18 for me, whereas Tevin Jenkins is like pick nine in the next round. So I also don't want to have too much speed because once again, we're going to be aiming uh, Anthony Schwartz later. As far as us doing a rebuild with this team, which we always end up doing, uh, it's definitely not preferable. Definitely not preferable for us to avoid Hardman and go for Anthony uh, Schwartz, but this is more for using. So I'm not really, you know, I don't really care too much if it costs us success and a rebuild down the line. It's more about you know building the best and most fair slash fun team, in my opinion. I mean, like you have Rondale Moore. He's like pick. Uh, what is it called? He's super fun because he's like short, but. I think he's pick five in the 16th round, but I think we have Quez Watkins in round 20, which is, once again, it's just weird, because I know he's 23, he's a little bit older, but look at the speed, like, 98 speed is just nuts. I really struggle with this pick, is like, round 15 to 17, like, you really see a lot of the talent just kind of disappear, and I really don't want to lose the main man that you guys know I love to have, he's 24, so... Next Madden is probably like, I mean, maybe you get one more year out of the next Madden, but it's probably the last Madden we're kind of, you know, getting teary eyed. Gonna be going for Terrell Edmonds. It's really early. Like I said, it's like round 14 and 17th. Uh, well, round pick, pick 14 in the round 17. But I honestly just don't have anything there. And there is a chance that he goes that early. We've seen Chase Claypool go like a whole round early. So you just don't know. Once again, this is another early pick, but I just can't believe that he goes this late. For me, I do have Kadarius Tony going 11 in round 18. We're, we'd have to take him early regardless. Yeah, so it would either be this round or next round. I kind of want to move some of these picks up just so we don't miss some of the better players. Like we have Cushenberry at 28 is a very good pick, I imagine. Uh, once again, I haven't really looked at all the ratings. Just kind of know the names, and they haven't really changed too much throughout the year. So Kadarius Tony, we're starting to get to the point where, you know, a lot of the good players in the draft are kind of gone so it's not like, you know, when you're taking this guy and it's really early, it feels really early, but as the Madden's have gone on, they have done a better job with teams taking better value. I mean, you see there, Dean Lowry just went, you know, I mean, look at some of the players. So if we looked at running back, uh, you know, the best available for youth would be A.J. Dillon, who, of course, is a pretty good player. He's 23, really good trucking. He's not the worst in speed, but definitely, you know, you'd like to see more there. But, I mean, you look around, it's not great. Look at wide receiver. It's a bunch of old guys. It, it seems really early because he's a 75 overall. It's only round 16. But you look around, like I said, and the overalls are gone. I mean, they are depleted. The overalls are definitely depleted. So the AIs do a pretty good job of keeping the old there. Of course, also over the years in Madden, you obviously know that the overalls in general have dropped. There is a lot of bad players here. So we're still drafting some of the best even though, at least to me, it even feels, once again, that it is like, you know, these guys are kind of feeling a little low overall for this early in the draft. You know, long are the days gone when, you know, you would have this kind of talent around 25 or 30. The AI is not that dumb anymore. And I don't know what long are the days gone. I, I don't know if that made sense, but if it did, props to me, I guess. And here's Cushenberry. He's 23. This guy I would play directly at center. He's not very athletic, but outside of that, he's very good. He's very good 
for just playing center. So we're going to take Cushenberry. Once again, a little early pick 28 in the 18th round is where I kind of would have had him go, but still very good player, obviously. And uh, now we're trying to catch up a little bit to where we should be. Diami Brown I had on the list. Once again, we just drafted another wide receiver. Do we really need him? We'll take a look at how good he is first. So Diami Brown, 21 years old, very developable, very fun because that, you know, he's very far off of being developed, but in my opinion, not a very good He's star, which is great. Only one away from superstar, which is the juice, but I don't know, dude. I'd probably rather go Anthony Schwartz, who, once again, has dropped significantly in speed, but there's other options. You also have uh, wherever Quez Watkins went, obviously. He's right there, of course. He's 23, which is a little bit on the older side, but insanely fast. Good jumping. Catching's pretty good out the gate. I mean, that's just a guy that can't be caught. So honestly, with this pick, I think we are going to reach because, once again, we have to. I really want uh, Kelvin Joseph pick 27 in the 20th round. And the way this is lining up, we look like we're going to have a late pick in round 20, uh, right? Yeah, so late pick in round 20. So I don't want to risk him. So if we're going to go with one of the guys, it would probably be, like I said, between Diami and Mr. Uh, wherever the hell Quez is. Again, I keep losing him. There is a bit of an age difference, of course. But there's also a speed difference. You're not going to get seven speed for Diami Brown in two seasons. It's just not going to happen. He's not bad. He's got aggressive catch. I don't know what um, what Quez has. But, yeah, I mean, he's also got aggressive. Quez is our guy. Simply put, 23. But, you know, for using, great. Once again, in the rebuild, it's probably going to hurt us. And with this pick, we're going to be jumping a little early. But Calvin Joseph is just a freak in the game. We've been kind of going for these types of players for a while. I mean, you look at... Uh, you know, what's the trend here? The trend is small, 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 small. This guy is also kind of, big, uh, you know, decently big, but he's also uh, on the older side. He's like 26. Yep, yeah, 26. Small, 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 small. I mean, they're all small, but then you have Kelvin Joseph, who's just a freak. 21 years old, super fast, 72 man, 74 zone. Good enough jumping. Great, you know, great enough catch. He's our choice. He goes around, uh, or pick 27 around 20, like I said. And uh, we're not going to risk that. So that's why we moved ahead. So everything's been about a round early. But I suppose for following this draft guide, that'll also help. Because typically outside of those first three rounds, we're, we should have the majority of the players on the list there. Oh, we have our whole offensive line already. That's kind of an L because I wanted one last pick. I wanted um, Kendrick Green. You guys know I love Kendrick Green. He was one of my uh, sleeper guys. I know he's normal dev, but... Look at the lead block. Look at the impact. Look at the speed, of course. Look at the strength. He's so good. Uh, I might still even grab him and, you know, you could trade off, you know, Cushionberry or something for a decent draft pick, perhaps. Which is fair. I mean, he's a good player. And honestly, with this pick, you're kind of just drafting uh, best available, which is probably running back. You need a backup, of course. You already have Dobbins, who is more of an elusive guy by technicality. Uh, but if we are going to be going with a uh, backup... We're probably going to be looking for Dylan or Mr. Trey Sermon, who is a lot worse than I thought. Where the hell is he? This low down? I get it. He's a rookie. He's a lot slower than I would have thought, too. I don't know if I even like AJ Dylan for this, but he is a good backup. He's a power back. He's strong. It's debatable because you do have Nwangwu, round 31. Probably the better backup anyways, but... Do we still just go A.J. Dillon anyways, maybe? I think we do. Once again, we just don't have many picks around. So, A.J. Dillon, he's 23, super strong. I don't know what his blocking ability is. Uh, looks actually okay. Maybe that's your new fullback instead. I don't know, but he's good value. Once again, we're, uh, we're kind of falling behind or going a little bit too high. As far as what we have drafted. So, we have our quarterback. We have our two running backs. We already have plenty of wide receivers. Our tight end. Uh, our whole offensive line. D-line, we have two slots missing, but we should be able to fill that soon. We have one linebacker. We have a couple in the, the mix. We have three corners. We have both of our safeties. It's a really good team filled with insanely athletic freaks and, of course, young players all across the board. With this pick, I really do like uh, Nico Collins. 49's run block kind of sucks, but I would love to play him at tight end two. But you do have Albert O. Nico Collins is another fun type of player, similar to DJ Chark. A little bit slower, though, unfortunately. But, I mean, as far as what you can grab, and that's kind of like the best available 
we really don't have a whole lot of like it's pretty much all linemen, wide receivers, and running backs. So we're gonna go Nico Collins just for the wide receiver depth. A really big player you can throw to, obviously. I mean, I, I don't think you'd be running with him. And then this pick, I know it's ironic I say that, but I think, assuming he is there, according to my little chart, is going to be Mr. Albert Okuwe Bunam. Every time I know his name and I mess it up. But of course, a very talented guy. Ironically, same team, but your poor man fan. So everything is basically a reach from here on out. We're going even further into the reaching future in this one. And we're going to grab Carlos Basham. 23 years old is a little high for my liking. Obviously, we've done a couple of those now, and he's normal. But 6'3", 281, 86 speed, 87 excel. Once again, he's a little raw. You do want to develop some of the players on your team, right? You don't want every single position to be perfect. But uh, Basham, super fun. You can play him at DT. You can play him at edge. I probably would play him at edge because it's just insanely cool seeing a 281-pounder running faster than the majority of the league at edge. And once again, it's a little early, a couple rounds early, but uh, I'm going to be taking Mr. Andre Sisco because of how fast he is. You can see here, insanely fast, great catching. Good backup, don't really need to start him, but maybe you put Edmonds down at, at linebacker. Of course, makes a little bit more sense anyways. And now here's the thing, it's very strange to grab a kicker this early or a punter this early, but obviously the later on you go in the draft, the longer or the cheaper the deal and the shorter the contract. So if we grab this guy a little bit earlier, we should be able to have him a little bit longer. This is another filler round. We have a couple of filler rounds here where it's just, there's so many just like empty rounds where everything else is just kind of good for the next round, but we're just still waiting. Like I said, we have a lot of the talent there, but you know, grabbing the best available every time left us once again early. And even though I've never got him to be good for us, He's 21, he's decently fast, he's a poor man's chase on who goes way earlier than this. I want him as a backup, maybe you decide Basham's better at DT, maybe you decide Basham just is too old to start at 23. I don't know what your scenario is, but Osai, 21 years old, fast, can't go wrong. Of course, a guy you know I love as a steal is uh, Tommy Togiai, I don't know if that's even how you say his name, but 21 years old, 71 block shed, very athletic for his size, Injury toughness is great. Stamina, I mean, DTs are usually pretty bad with that. 91 strength. Once again, block shed's pretty good. Power move needs some work, but 21 years old. Probably the plug-and-play starting DT. Now, this is where you could go with someone like John Ross. You know, he's fast, but 25 years old. He's a good kick returner, I suppose. Injury and toughness is a little worrisome. That's kind of his whole point of his career. But if you want him as a kick returner, go for it. If not, I'm going to go with another safety steal. So you have safeties upon safeties and that of course is the main man Caden Stearns 21 years old six foot tall 91 speed 90 excel you know just what can you ask for just a really good backup level safety I mean you could even start him if you really wanted to and John Ross is still there but I just still I don't really care to be honest and once again just to make sure we don't lose out on some of our extra steals outside of the catching Baron Brown he's a damn beast sucks his catching sucks but you should still be able to catch a few if you're in perfect timing with your user, but yeah, I'm making no damn promises. I'll just be honest with you. So we're going to take depth if he's still there. Kendrick Green, I'm surprised he is, to be honest. God damn, dude. Game's screwing us over. Once again, we don't absolutely need those guys. We have the three main wide receivers, and hell, there's probably still someone. 2-2 Atwell, round 33 is a fun little uh, wide receiver to grab. I mean, there's always just picks. We almost sold on another big name, though. Of course, that is Divine Diablo. Some players at uh, 23 years old are still just too good to pass on. The reason why he's so good, obviously, besides the hit power and the speed and all that, is the fact that he's a safety convert, which we've probably mentioned millions of times, which means that his uh, coverage is actually really good for a starting uh, linebacker that's, you know, once again, lower overall in press. 73 press is insane. Uh, you know, a lot of the rookies you draft are like 40, 50 press. He's got 73. He's, he's kind of broken. And then this is a pick where if you really wanted to get cheesy with it, Alex Mack is probably a good choice. Pick uh, 26 in round 33. But for me personally, who we don't, you know, we don't really need that guy. I'm going to end up going 2-2 Atwell just because I just like him too much not to. He's just too much fun. 21 years old, 5'9", 160. He's just like a little beast at kick returner. I want him. So once again, we did go a little thin at wide receiver. I would have loved to add Anthony Schwartz. I can't believe I sold on him, but... Still, there's just always so many options. It just never ends, it seems. 
And then, of course, you know me. I'm a sucker for speed and size. Spencer Brown, I know he's 23, but six foot eight. I mean, I got to. I got to. He's one of my players on the list that you probably just don't need. So Jabril Cox, probably back up. Maybe you can start him. It's up to you. Your choice. And, of course, if you wanted Tucker, he goes literally right where I am right now. Pick, 30, uh, pick 10 and 35th round. Uh, it says he's still there. Great player, obviously. But I think you can go a little bit better with... Ooh, McPherson, who's only normal. I forgot about him. Um, who's the guy that I was looking for? It's still Harrison Bucker, I think. Even though Nizril Adin is very low in overall, he's another one of those safety converts. So his catching's high, his speed is decently high, his hit power is pretty high. Jabril's technically better, but once again, Jabril is older. I'd say these guys are just backups, but, you know, if you're desperate, why not? Of course, another fun name that we all know and love, Mr. Javelin Gaudry, formerly known as the Javelin. I mean, at this point, you're kind of just grabbing whatever the hell you want. I mean, there's really not any specific position to grab. I mean, we don't have our backup quarterback, and I really do like Cole McDonald in the game. I know he's a 56 overall, but 88 throw power, decently fast. Accuracies are just good enough. I don't know what his traits are for, like, uh, sensing pressure, but he's a good enough backup. I want him. We're taking him. What do you want from me? Yeah, you know, here you have fullback. Use checks a little too old. Patrick Ricard is a very good fullback. He's 27. We're kind of at the point where maybe this is his last Madden that we're kind of, you know, seeing him as the best. A lot of the fullbacks are kind of on the older side now, right? Like, they're all pretty damn old for, like, how good they are, at least. Alec Ingold is probably the best choice, but even he's got 65 run block. What are we looking at for Patrick Ricard? Like, what's his run block? 71. I mean, it's not crazy great, but he is a big fella. He's, he is a really big fella, so, I mean, it's it's really up to you. It's kind of just all over the place. It's really between Patrick Ricard and uh, Alec Ingold. Yeah, use check is 30. He's just too old for this, uh, for this situation. I just think Patrick Ricard is just that much better, so we're going to take Patrick Ricard. Why not? And, I mean, I've seen the fullbacks were there still 41-42 round, so, I mean, this is even, you know, once again, a really high early pick, but... There's not really much to grab, like I said. I mean, we pretty much have everything. The only two picks I really would have loved to have back were Nwangwu and uh, Anthony uh, Schwartz, of course. But outside of that, there really wasn't much more that you could really do. Uh, we'll probably grab a couple of you know more backups just to fill those positions out. But as far as me helping you out or telling you where people go and when they go and what's the best situation, that's kind of over. I don't think we really need that anymore. I think it's it's time has passed. I said in the um, the guide, I said uh, basically just, you know, draft for need, best available pick. You know, if you need a quarterback, go for someone that's fast and or has high throw power. You need D-line, go for block shed, power or finesse. Wide receiver, tight end, DB, linebacker, go for the speed. There's not really much more you could do. Obviously, you're aiming for the youngest possible on top of that, but... Yeah, those are, those are kind of the goals. Obviously, don't forget your kicker. <laughs> don't forget your kicker. Don't do that. So if you look at our base overall, it's a 79. I don't know if we would have went up at all. I adjusted the lineup slightly, and we did. So we're an 80 on the nose, which is very good. Of course, we tried our best to make a good young team that still needed developing, but also had good enough day one talent. And I think that's exactly what we did. Maybe, like I said, I'd like to focus a little bit more on the offensive line round three. Would have been nice instead of having to go quarterback. Could have went with a lineman like Sewell, but you know what? It's still a really good line. Wills and uh, Ragnar on the edges, definitely good enough. Interior, definitely underrated. You know, once again, Cushenberry, not a bad player. He's just not very mobile, but that's why he's just going to sit at center with Jenkins moving to guard, who is pretty damn athletic, actually. You know, very fast, 72 speed, ED Excel. And then, of course, we already know Quinn Miners is very solid as well. Maybe should just be at center, but... You know, more athletic. So a lot of athleticism is kind of the, the, the whole key to this. Noah Fant still needs developing, but obviously lots to like there. Super fast. Finally got him. Kind of sell on him a lot. Uh, Dobbins, a little earlier than we would have liked, but of course insanely good. Fights for yards, trade, uh, good stamina, toughness, and injury. Catching's okay enough. And then more importantly, he's a dual-style threat. I mean, trucking and stiff arms are already pretty damn high, and he's 23, so... Maybe go one more elusiveness upgrade and then just go straight to trucking. Of course, Chark, your number one kind of jump ball receiver outside of Fant. Kind of, you know, needs some developing there, but, you know, looking good. Kadarius Tony, just a great yards after the catch guy. Quez Watkins, just straight line burner. Uh, Justin Fields, raw but super fast, good for good and fun for read options. 
And then defensively, a little bit more, uh, you know, things you need to develop. But that's what I like. You know, I like to have to use her linebackers. Simmons, you probably could just leave on his own. But if you wanted to use her, go ham. Obviously, you can with him. Browning, super fun user. Catching's a little rough, but like I said, super fast, super good strongness. Decent coverage. Same with Diablo. Corners, you could probably just leave them on their own because of how fast they are. Same with safeties. Very strong, fast players there. D-line, Miles Garrett and Vita Vey are going to kill it. Togiai and Basham. You see how they go? Same with Osai if you want to put him over Basham. But once again, you have a few things to draft, but a lot is in place. You just need to use them. You need to use them. You need to play well. And you're going to be slightly less than the other AI. So you might have a sliver of a challenge, but most importantly, you have a ton and fun players to develop. And in my opinion, that is the definition of a perfect fantasy draft. Of course, we do have to uh, say that I missed out on Wangwu and Mr. Anthony Schwartz. But other than that, I like how this turned out. Of course, looking at the overalls, it kind of seems like the base overalls probably about 82 Seen a couple 81s, couple 82s, couple 83s, couple 84s. Seems like the average is about 82, maybe 82.5 at worst. So once again, with us being as low of an uh, you know overall, it's fine because there's also a couple of 80 overall teams, but their age is nowhere near as good as ours. So overall, I like where we went with the draft. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Of course, we could go for pure OP. I'm not going to say the rest of that. Just purely OP, but I think that's the way I wanted it to turn out, and I like it. We'll probably do a rebuild of this, maybe even like have it up on Tuesday or something. But yeah, that's about it. Once again, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Jump Care, second channel, Care Plays, and then twitch.tv slash Jump Care for streams, which, ironically enough, if uh, the rebuild comes up on Tuesday, would probably be a stream on Tuesday. But yeah, later tonight, around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, Raiders franchise. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you come back for next video, but until next video, see ya!